Hi there, I'm Matt Pepper and I'm going to talk to you about MicroStrategy and how it can help you as a company to do better governed data discovery. First and foremost, our company's vision is intelligence everywhere. That is about providing the right information to the right person at the right time so they can make an informed decision and, and progress as a business. But the problem is there are very many things stopping this from happening. So first and foremost, the fact that we have all this data all over the place with so many different tools, the fact that people are building this over and over again so people argue over what is the right thing and what is the right number. As well as the fact that some of the tools that are available, these data discovery tools, are very, very powerful, but not powerful enough for an enterprise. They're good for a department. And then you will have different definitions of revenue and the fact that there is lack of consistency. So how does Mike's strategy differ from that? This has been a 30 year journey for us. So in 1989, we had a semantic layer, which were things such as attributes and metrics, which has progressed into different data sources, to invoices, including things now such as geospatial capabilities and uh, more data discovery. The semantic graph is different because now it's including people. So commentary, uh, certification, and even where people are. For this specific thing, the semantic graph right down the bottom enables us to build and reuse things over and over again. So depending on what you want to do, you don't have to start from scratch. So we're going to be looking specifically at the governed data discovery part on this presentation. So you have your data on the left hand side and a business user who has accessed a dossier that's been created. The power user is then allowed to connect to another data source and join that and blend it on the fly to create something uh, greater than it has already. And if necessary, can then publish that back so then everyone else can have access to that analysis. The use case I'm going to go into now is Matt. He's a marketing analyst, he's rakishly good looking, um, he has no coding experience, um, very good at things like data analysis and looking at Excel, um, has had some microstrategy training so knows, understands how to bring some information in, and more, most importantly there is a short deadline without any IT help. So therefore we have to get this done and send an information to Martina, Matt's boss. This is the question that needs to be answered. So what, which campaigns are providing the best return on investment? So we'll come back to this one after the demonstration to see if I've managed to accomplish these things. There's going to be multiple different data sources. There's also the data is not fit for purpose. So that means some things are not defined clearly. There is uh, different definitions. The, ta the tables aren't, uh, aren't looking very good at and there's too much dates as well, so we're going to reduce the date. We're then going to build a visualisation and analyse the return on investment. And once made that anal analysis, we are then going to distribute it to Martina, who's actually on their iPad at the time. So without further ado, let's go back into the demo. I'm going to be using MicroStrategy Workstation, but all of this can be done as well using the web interface. So, connecting to the environment. Now I've been told that some of this information is being held in Google. So I'm going to connect to Google. And because the connection has already been set up by my ID department, I can just go in and there's my table. So I can go in there and check it. And there's the information straight away. Now I also want to join other information that I've got in our CRM. So I'm just going to go into that and I already have a connection here. And I'm going to bring this other information in on the fly. Now MicroStrategy's uh, been very helpful here because it's got two things called campaign name. 
but actually they're not the same definitions and joining on campaign on a description is never a good thing so I'm going to unmap those two things I'm actually going to join on the campaign ID and map them like this I'm then going to use the definition there to create a multi-form so we don't need to see that ID and I want to see the definitions that are in Google BigQuery so I'm just going to submit like that and then I see that there's some numbers and I'm just going to drag those into the metrics now I think if I look into this is there any further information that I'd need to look into well I would hope from our CRM it's nice and clean but I'm pretty sure that looking at this information it will need a bit of feedback well like for example this type subtype needs to be unsplit so we're now going to go in and wrangle so this is the cleansing of the data this means that I don't have to stop what I'm doing go back into the data and fix the data on the fly it takes it's very laborious doing that so I'm going to look at the start date and now I'm going to go to a timeline selector I can see there's a lot of wasted time here and actually I'm not really interested in 2017 anyway so I'm going to select that and then delete anything that's not included in the selectors so that's a bit better in fact so let's remove those as well I'm going to now just look I think there's another one called type and subtype I'd like to split those two out because I'm going to use those so I'm going to rename and split by a comma and then I can select the whole thing and split the whole table based on a separator which can be whatever you want it to be but it's defaulted to comma so I'm going to apply on that and now I've got type and subtype I'm going to just unmap these ones here because I don't want to see the, look at these ones and I'm actually going to not import those as well so this data wrangling uh, as it's called in MicroStrategy is incredibly powerful and it enables end users to manipulate the data without going out of the reporting tool to actually do some more work uh, I used to have to do this in Excel or in a database and it slows things down when actually you just want to get on with some analysis it also has saved everything as a script so if I join these two tables again and want to apply that the same role the same rules will apply and then I can edit on the fly again so I'm now going to call this the pulse and save that data set. So that's now bringing the data in memory to make it as fast as possible and if I refresh it there we go. So that's my data and the analysis done. I've manipulated that data. I now want to go ahead and build a dossier. So I'm just going to right click and create some a dossier now I may not know what I want to do so one of the key things now uh, we can do is using NLG so I can actually just write something and then MicroStrategy will provide the best and most appropriate visualization for that question so I'm going to ask it show me the top 10 campaigns by leads and there we go it's already created the top 10 I'm just going to sort that and we can see that the mobile campaigns are particularly strong so I can type I can ask more questions by typing it incredibly powerful and it's great for an analyst such as Matt who um, may not be uh, as proficient in microstrategy I also can now create another visualization I think I'll drag that to the bottom and I'm going to bring in the campaign the costs and the leads and costs I'm now going to reformat that because I like to see the numbers in pounds and take off that's good and actually it would be really good to see the costs divided by the leads 
So by selecting both of them, I can right click and create a calculation as simple as this. And now I've got another metric that's calculated. It's defaulted as a percentage, so I can go in again and change it to pounds. Now I've been told that there may be some dummy data um, that's quite large, so if I just sort it descending on there, I can see this is test, 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 and do not use. What I'm going to do is select those two and just exclude it from my analysis. Now that would look really good as a heat map, so let's have a look at that. So just by clicking on the visualization, and I actually want to see the type, not the campaign, and the subtype itself. So just by clicking and dragging and dropping, I'm creating a much wider analysis of the information. Now, I have actually used two different tables so far. What I'm now going to do is join to MicroStrategy's semantic graph, and I'm going to connect based on the email that's the person who's used to look at this campaign. Therefore, what that will do is it will securely join the information. So when I then publish this information to the salespeople, they will only see what they are allowed to see, their contacts, their accounts. So I can connect here and add another data source, but instead of new data, I'm going to select an existing data set. And now I'm going to look and find email, and that's the data set that I've been told to look at, so I'm just going to bring that data set in, and there it is. Now they're not joined at the moment, so I'm just going to go back into my original data set, and I can see email here, and then I'm going to map this to the semantic graph, and I think it's called account contact. There we go. So by doing this, you can see it's just changed, it's now gone italics. So that has now mapped that information and any security filter that has been applied on the account contact will now apply on there as well, on all of this data, regardless of whether it would come from Google BigQuery, the um, marketing database, or in fact MicroStrategy. I'm now going to just create another metric and I'm going to change the parameters because I actually want it to become a distinct. And I'm just going to call it an adjusted amount, not just amount. And I think that would look a bit cleaner. That looks a bit nice, so that's great. Okay, so because we are an international uh, visualize a, a company here and we want to see this globally, it would be really good to have a visualization that shows this as well. So I'm just going to type here and go, show me campaigns by city. There we go. And my strategy is intuitive enough, it can actually bring, and it knows city is already mapped Therefore, it's come up as a map here. Fantastic. That's great, but wouldn't it be better if I can then map and filter this information? So if I select a particular region or area, you can see the information filtered. Yeah, that could be very useful. Now, my end users, the sales guys, they always like to see things such as what, when the, is it a new opportunity, is it a renewal, what stage of the opportunity is available, and also what type of marketing it was. So I'm going to keep those in there, I think that might be quite useful. And from a piece of analysis, I think I'm confident that my end users will be able to use this, so I'm going to now uh, close this, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it return on investment and save. Now I've certified this. I'm allowed to, as a marketing analyst, certify this. This means that the data has come from a trusted source, the calculations have gone through that. So if there are lots of things called ROI or return on investment, you know the one that's got this little logo here is the right place to look. 
So I'll just select there and now you can see the return on investment. So I've done my analysis, I've brought the data in, I've manipulated it and built the, the visualization. Now, the hardest thing sometimes is to actually distribute to the people so they can make the choices at the right time. So I'm now going to share this information and I'm going to send it to Martina. She will know and find out via email and also you'll get a notification. So at least she's now got access to this. But what's she going to look at? So being uh, wanting to make sure it looks really good, I've already logged in. I'm now going to look at the information as she would and that's how it would look and I think that's really good. But I'm actually now going to say I'm only interested in the new opportunities and actually the ones that have actually we're ne we've either closed or we're nearly closed. And actually let's let's select all of those but ignore emails. So I've now done a bit more filtering and that's reduced the, the amount of dots. It would be great now to share that filter with Martina. So I'm now going to go to collaboration and I'm going to just type to her, Martina. Um, And now I have just sent uh, Martina a collaboration notification. So I'm going on to my iPad now because Martina's uh, out, out on the road and wants to see this information immediately. And here comes my iPad. And you can see I have only got one dossier available on my iPad and at the top here I have got return on investment, so I can check out this filter. So if I click on it, it's created the visualization. It's shown exactly what I can see, uh, what, what Martina can see. It's reduced the amount that she can see based on her security profile. And she may be interested to focus on, on Europe. So we'll look at Europe alone. And what you can see on Europe, the return on investment, it appears that symposiums are one of the biggest things. So from that perspective, that symposia definitely are the way forward. OK, so going back to the objectives. So we connected to three different data sources. So one was the CRM, one was Google BigQuery, and one was MicroStrategy as a secure data source. You saw me wrangling that data to manipulate it, splitting, joining on the fly, and filtering the information that was coming from Google BigQuery. We then created an analysis by using NLG, or by just dragging and dropping information into the box boxes and making them filter other things as well. And finally, once you created that masterpiece, you could then distribute that information and you saw Martina get the information, see a notification and also the filter that was made available, all of that distributed to her iPad. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, guys.